I'm convinced that I lived a previous lifetime out there. I bet you sure. did. I do. <laughs> I feel, you know, uh, you ever feel connected to certain parts of the world you have never been? Uh, yeah, or places I've traveled to, like Venice, Italy, Barcelona, Paris, where I know I've had lifetimes there before. I can just feel mm -hmm. it immediately, especially Venice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you went to Venice, did you feel like I've been here before? Oh, my God, yes. I felt like I had been an artist in Venice before. That was the hit I was getting. And mm -hmm. also, you know, sounds like lovely. Water. You know, the city is surrounded by water. So I was very yes. much at home. There, but it was that past life connection. Wow. And, yeah. where, where have you felt most connected? Well, the, uh, I've never been to Mongolia where this uh, this yeah. was shot with, I don't know if it was a blue screen. I assume it was a blue screen of the Gobi Desert. And um, I what I love about that particular musical piece is it's a juxtaposition of a modern woman, Generation Z, up against this ancient backdrop of the Gobi where people have th survived and in some cases thrived for thousands of years and using a, what looks like a traditional instrument. And uh, I loved to see the, the uh, contrast of the barren landscape, the horses, it's a horse culture. Yes. The introduction of this modern re-expression of all of that. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's a great point you made. I loved it. I loved it. You always pick something good to start the show with. <laughs> it surprised me today. I didn't know what it was going to be. Yeah. yeah. So listen, uh, did you watch the eclipse yesterday? I did. I watched it from my living room on television because I live here in Southern California. We, we had very little of it that was visible. I did step outside for a few minutes and frankly, you couldn't tell anything was going on. So it was better just to watch it on TV. But how about yourself? You know, it's so funny. I'm. I think that animals respond to whatever their caretakers are doing. Um, yeah. So it's Oregon, so it's dark here all the time. <laughs> so, I was sitting on my, so I was sitting on my. I'm taking this media course. I'm really glad I'm doing it. Um, yeah. And I'm just old. I'm this old lady. I can't figure out where anything is. And the kids are zipping past me doing Photoshop. And I'm like, I lost my cane. Help. My whimsy. Uh, I, I have trouble with computer technology also. It's a generational thing for us. I think it's safe to say we're both two smart people. I know lots of people who are smart. I know a woman with a PhD who cannot comprehend computer uh, technology. It's because you know what it is? I don't have patience. I don't have patience to read. Did you read the manual? No. Oh God, no. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I can't. But so that's what I did during the eclipse. I was working on that. <coughs> so Mila went, looked outside. Huh? <laughs> thing, like what the heck? And then she came and she looked at me well, like, what you, what's happening out there? And my response was nothing more important than me finishing this freaking paper. I got to finish to which my cat went, are you sure? <laughs> 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 to which Mila looked, are you sure? My cat didn't even respond. And then my cat crawled next to me and went to sleep. Well, if you're not making a big deal out about it, neither will I. Feed me scratch. Feed me kibble. I'm going to sleep. You know how they claim that animals can tell when an earthquake is about to happen? I have proven that theory to be a lot of nonsense because this was many years ago. This was back in the 80s. I had a cocker spaniel. I had a cat and I had a cockatoo. Plus, I had an aquarium not one that's land sea and air not one animal <laughs> from home responded in the least before the earthquake happened not in the least <laughs> well let's turn the camera around and let's say hi do we have any uh, hey, guests today sure. let's see here we have are they hi to us or are they uh no, horrified that we didn't make more of a big deal of the, uh, i don't know yeah. We should have made more of a big deal. I don't know. I'm not much. I don't get the point. Do you get the point? <laughs> get the point? 
<laughs> yeah, like some people really want to watch it, and I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, why? It's just going to cover the sun, and then it's going to uncover well, the sun. What's well, the point? When I watched it on television, because, you know, they were going from different cities in the pathway of totality. Was it totalitary? Is it, mm -hmm. What's the term for it? Yeah. Anyway, they were, everyone was like, it's a religious experience. I wasn't expecting to be moved so deeply and intensely. It's a once in a lifetime thing. And <laughs> 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 on something. <laughs> I, I sent the day, the thing in, and then I get a response back from my teacher. <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> Isn't that the assignment? No, that's not the assignment. This is completely wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, Okay, so you had a mystical experience. I did the assignment completely wrong. Yeah. yeah. I just sat here and watched it on my TV. I watched it electronically. I would have loved to have actually been in the pathway. I'd like to have experienced it. I, that would have been enough to get me to step outside. Uh, you know, I have friends, uh, Fairmount, Indiana, near Indianapolis, you know, James mm -hmm. Dean's hometown. I also have a very good friend uh, near Buffalo. So there were people... Wow. I know who did get to witness it at least. Uh huh. They awesome. Yeah. So, um, yeah. are you ready to look at the green orange blob, or do you just want to contemplate the orange blob? I assume you are ready to talk about the orange blob because of what has happened. The orange blob. Yeah. The, the orange blob. To <coughs> I might have erased the pictures of him because. Uh, you folks got upset when I was like, no, it was like, be gone, Satan, or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, people get people get really upset about the whole thing that's going on. But it uh, looks like, uh, well, did you see that uh, Michael Avenatti was uh, interviewed on the beat? That's the other thing. Uh, you know, I didn't see that. I didn't. Tell me about that. He says that it's not the best case. It's not the best case because um, he said the case is eight years old. Uh, these yeah. are misdemeanors. Uh, they're stretching it. And Aven of course, Avenatti is sitting in a prison for the for four years. Mm -hmm. Michael Avenatti is, but yeah. he was not. Um, he felt that this thing was not the most important case. And of course, a lot of people feel it's the missing classified documents that's really going to ultimately take out Donald Trump. Wow. I, it's You really think something will finally take him out? So far, it's he's like the monster, like the Freddy Krueger monster. You keep trying to kill him and nothing takes him out. Well, the other thing is, as I make my cup of tea, we're very casual here. Mm -hmm, very uh, Breaking out of my fucking whimsy mug here. Yeah, well, just want to make sure I don't have a cough, drive people crazy. Mm. I think How we can do the, I'm sorry, go ahead. How is your cough? Is it better? It's a lot better. I still it's get a cough. The allergy it's wipe better. helped you quite a bit. The allergy wipes, but afterwards, I still have to brush her and clumps still come out. Yeah. And actually, I think I'm. I didn't put the uh, thing back on, so I think that might also be causing sensitivity. It, it's just something you always have to work at. Well, I know with my cat, I whenever I comb her, I swear there's enough hair that comes off of her to make two or three more cats. I don't know where it all comes from. Uh, it's, I would say it's 80 to 90 percent better than. Well, thank goodness. Better. Remember how it was last year? I had to, I could barely breathe. Oh, well, I know how you love your Mila. I do, I do. Yeah. I love okay. me. Yeah. So we got a lot to talk about. We so yeah. the first thing I was going to say is we is that they rejected the appeals. The guy is going. No, that I knew. Yeah. And Avenatti, he doesn't feel like it's a particularly uh, strong case. The other thing is, of course, we can talk about what is the guy's name? Odie, the man that's now stating that he. Uh, was a prostitute or he no he didn't say he was a prostitute he no. claims that he well he claims that he was nothing but a slave of Diddy he sued Diddy because oh, he, he yeah. contracted uh, herpes this is Odie what yeah, that was bizarre you sent me the video of the man yeah uh, 
you know, he was in his cell. He was wearing a hospital gown claiming, didn't he claim he'd been in a mental institution or something? He had been driven crazy by this and that's why he was wearing the hospital gown. Well, he was also claiming that Diddy was bringing liquid cocaine, flying mm -hmm. it in on his private plane, yeah. and that the feds are not checking. The feds don't check the private planes, and that's how he was able to get liquid cocaine into the country. That's astounding. That's truly astounding, especially someone as high profile as he is. Mm -hmm. But Odie okay. said a lot of things that sounded crazy, like it did yeah. sound like a cult. I mean, I thought said, so too. Yeah, he said that they were part of the Illuminati and they were going to take over the world and the rest of us were going to be yeah. And it goes back to those weird stories about golden juice and have it, you have to humiliate yourself to be yes. devoted to him. And oh, that was disgusting. And, and stuff. Yeah, where uh, people have to what drink Diddy's urine, forgive me yeah. for saying that, yeah. that's what it was, and do it on camera so he could have that recording to blackmail that uh, person. Usually it's a celebrity, it's someone very high profile themselves, but so Diddy could blackmail them at any time. But so that's my, badly they wanted in this cult. They also produced a drug, adrenochrome, which was golden juice based on that story, but we're talking about this golden juice, which is different from that golden juice. So yeah, yeah. my question to you when the story broke about this weird stuff, because I know you're an actor, you've been in television your whole life. So my question to you was, if you had been introduced in this party and you had been gone into that basement and you'd been in this crowd of people that were part of this secret cult, that had all done that. And they and Diddy said to you, I see talent in you and I'm gonna make you a star. You just have to do this ceremony and we're gonna film it. Would you participate? Absolutely no. Absolutely no, because my integrity means far more to me. I don't care how much you want something. Uh, it would be rather meaningless to me. It would be, it would become something dark, ugly, sinister evil i don't i personally would not want any part of that and i would say no okay my next question to you is do you, now uh, other people are being uh, Im implicated impl implicated yes so uh linked other famous people uh jello for example jenny from the block um jay-z uh, the Kardashians, uh, a lot of people have gone to Diddy parties. I mean, yeah. what do you think is going to happen? Uh, it certainly would not surprise me one bit if people have been doing this. I mean, I've lived in L.A. for almost 40 years, and I've known plenty of people who would do anything. Uh, I, I have a good friend. Uh, she knows several famous actresses, and I won't name this person, but she said, frankly, this actress would run over. She would take a truck and back over her grandmother if it meant getting a really good movie role that would win her an Oscar. I mean, there, there are just people in this town who don't have scruples. They don't care. They're just so aimed toward fame, success, money, and hence you have a lot of hollow unhappy people. I've certainly seen a lot of that. That was one of the uh, first things I, I moved to LA back in the, the 80s, how unhappy people were in the industry. Have you ever heard anybody, I mean, like, have you ever had anybody say I participated or I was a part of that or, or, tell, or that they had seen something and left? Because I have. I've, I've talked to people who got scared and have left these kinds of parties. You know? I have heard rumors of it, but I've never actually had a confirmed story from anyone that I've known personally. But I've certainly heard enough about its existence. It seems to be like there's two parties. There's the vanilla parties where, you know, the people show up and then they leave at around 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Yeah. And then there's an after party that gets a little weird. That's a different party. That seems to be what people are saying. Yeah. So, so I think the secret, if you ever find, find yourself in a situation like this, is to just leave the party early. That's what I would say. I'd be one of those people leaving. I'd, I would want nothing to do with that. Yeah. You know, that To me, that kind of success is not success. 
Mm -hmm. very meaningless. You know, when I first came out here in the 80s, and I was I was working a job in Beverly Hills where I had to wait on people, a lot of celebrities, a lot of industry people. And I moved here from Virginia thinking I would envy these people, these people in their mansions, their fancy cars, their clothes, their jewelry, their success. And one after another, I just saw the most neurotic, spiritually dead people, people so unhappy, so unfulfilled, even though they had all these things that I once thought I wanted for myself. And I think it was a big education in values. What and also in the difference between pretend versus real and Hollywood is a land of pretend and you can't really believe anything anyone says until you see it for yourself. That tends to be, that tends to be the case. We both have witnessed that ourselves. Well, even dating in LA, I mean, you think you've, you've dated someone for five years, you think you know them, and then you find out they're wanted in six states. I mean, like, it's like, it's a bizarre task. What is real? All yeah. right. So I'm going to turn the camera around and say a quick hello to everybody, then we can go ahead and get started. Oh, yeah. uh, great to see you all here. Uh, um, Donald and Debbie, our wonderful Debbie Brady is here. And to see you, uh, Debbie. Chris, Kay, and Michelle. Uh, scrolling through the names here, and uh, who else? Did we miss Sandy anybody? Miller. She uh, sent me a beautiful scarf. Thank you, Sandy. Well, that scarf is beautiful. I didn't yeah. know that's where you got it from because I was complimenting you on that before the show. Uh, Georgie yeah. Ergo, Green Eyed Love. Hello, Creative Love, Joyce Pietras. Um, we will keep saying hi to everybody. K Travel to Row, hello. We'll keep saying hi to people as they go along. I do not see the floor director. Is he coming today? I don't know. I do not see uh, Joel Tilson today. Hopefully he'll be in later. Hi, Terry Courts. Yeah. Robbins. You know, she has an interesting comment here for about the eclipse. For some weird reason, I could not force myself to watch the eclipse. My body felt it would be wrong for me. Well, you know, I uh, I have some friends who were uh, adversely, you know, energetically affected by the eclipse. I know, it, in fact, our friend Joyce Petrus would probably be able to elaborate on that, being an astrologer. Yeah, I felt the same way. Did you? What did you feel? Uh, not to look at it, not to go near it. I mean, I'm an Aries also. Um, yeah. So, you know, I'm an Aries with Leo rising. Do you think I need more... <laughs> um so yeah i don't need more sun energy more heat but uh i just felt it was a little too much and uh so i closed the windows and my cat and i had quiet time it was mm -hmm. it was it was too much it was too bright and they say don't look at it and yeah well yeah. here on the west coast we didn't have much to see anyway Oh, we a little yeah. tiny corner of the sun, maybe a little circle. That was about it. You know? Oh, where was the best viewing in the? Oh, uh, the best view was the the Midwest. I think it was from oh. like New Orleans going upward toward Indiana, going up toward New York, toward Maine. That's the best way I can describe it. But it cut like diagonally through the heartland of America. Wow. Yeah. Okay, well, before we get started and say the empaths prayer, I just wanted to give a shout out to the amazing Gail Neenhus. Gail, oh, there we go. Gail Neenhus. She is the author of Spark, one of the most interesting workbooks I think I've ever seen. Have you gotten your copy yet? I haven't gotten my copy yet. I'm looking forward to it. I should uh, get did you talk to Gail? Did you call Gail? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Okay, She's great, great, great. Um, I think this is an amazing book. Basically, we've talked a lot about this concept of fulfilling your your purpose in this world, but it has to come from your core star. It has to, and it's a furnace that you feed. And the more you love yourself, and the more discipline you have towards that thing that you were, I hear an echo again. Um, uh, let me see if I can turn this down. Let me see if that helps. Um, then you, uh, you you feed it. It's basically how to feed your passion. Something's causing an echo. What's, I, hmm, I don't hear it from here. Oh, I just hear myself clipping a little bit. It's okay. All right. I'm looking forward to this book very much. 
Yeah, so um, the takeaway is that you have to find it in yourself and then you have to respect it and you have to feed it. So it's not enough to find that part of yourself. You have to respect yourself enough to defend and protect and to avoid critics. Cynic, well, criti some criticism is healthy if the person is trying to help you get from a point to A to point B. Um, <clears throat> you know, for example, if you have a creative director whose job is to, you know, Debbie is to critique, right? Mm -hmm. That person's there to make you shine. But I'm talking about somebody who's destructive, then you probably need to avoid them. Absolutely. People that want to sabotage you. So yeah. that is the book. And she's going to be here in our studios. Uh, she's going to be here in our studios on the 30th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've got a lot of reading and work to do between them. But I, I, I'm excited about this. Yeah. Well, would you like to uh, say the impasse prayer or have me say this? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. And then after that, we will blitz, blitz, blitz away. Does that work out for everybody? Great. All right. Let's do the empaths prayer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. I want to call on white light protection for myself and this community as we ask permission from spirit to access the Akashic records. We call on our spirit guides and our good angels to be with us. Please give us the clarity and the wisdom that is needed to empower all of us on our journeys to make the best decisions for ourselves, our families, the planet, the people we love, but also to help those that we may have strife with. And together, collectively, we say, Amen. Amen. You know, I was also going to say about Trump that um, true social tanked. Did you hear about that? Yes, yes. Um, it's hasn't it lost almost all of its value. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it was even still, Trump could not have withdrawn any funds from it. I think until September or October. I don't know the reasons for that, but now there's apparently nothing to even take from it. Well, I think it might have to do with whatever the contract is with the company when you buy stock that you may have to, if you invest in shares, you'll have to hold for 90 days or you'll have to hold for six yeah. months or whatever. Yeah. And it could be that whatever the contract is, is that you have to hold until September. Yeah. Um, so when everybody's ready, we can blitz, blitz, blitz away and we can get to some of the questions people have already um, talked about. Yeah might be fun. So um, people wanted to first talk about the jury selection for Trump in the Stormy Daniels case. We had a lot of questions about that. People wanted to know uh, whether or not he would lose his appeal. It looks like he has. Yes, he did. Do you, I guess my next question for you, given who he is, is, is number one, do you think he can get a fair trial in New York? I'm sorry, I'm cheek. Um... I think they're making an effort to give him a fair trial. I think Trump's his own worst enemy. He's he makes it difficult to have a fair trial. He can't, you know, he keeps shooting his mouth off. They keep having to do uh, gag orders on him. Um, if he would just get out of the way, maybe he could have a fair trial. Mm hmm. And then the next question, a lot of people want to know, and I guess we can go ahead and blitz on this and throw, uh, it's a yes or no is, do you, and this came up a lot of it, a lot before it even got to this point. Do you think that he's going to intimidate the jury, find names, begin to, are these people, it, it, are, is there safety a question, do you think? Well, that was one of the reasons for the gag order, because there was that concern that uh, anybody who wanted to testify, anybody on the jury, Trump would go after them and try to publicly dig up dirt and humiliate them or do whatever he has he can to bully them. So they're trying to prevent him. But I think, yeah, he'll get away with anything he can get away with. So let's just check and see if the jury is safe and if the if we have a problem of a compromised or or jury being threatened.
Do please. Yeah, please well, go ahead. The same cards came up. Survival. <sighs> balance. You know, the scales of justice. Purpose. But also there is a shadow. There is a shadow. So it is, there is a looming danger there. It could happen. It's not necessarily, but there is a shadow on them. And they may have to, there may be some survival here. I'm not quite sure what to read into that. What do you get, Whimsy? That's so interesting. You know, I, I use HCRB and I really try to be the person. You yeah. know, the seventh house is the person waiting for his ship to come in, waiting to be oh. saved. You know what's interesting about this energy? Yeah. I feel like as Trump, my situation is so serious that every time I breathe, they watch me. I'm afraid to move. I'm afraid they are on top of me. I have to, yeah. you know, it's he cannot resist the impulse to get dirt on people and then tear them to pieces. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's going to be nearly impossible because I feel like this guy is so controlled. They are so after him. Two of swords, he cannot change. This guy is not capable of change. But I'll tell you and something. Um, he's, he's so contained. He's so contained that I, I constantly see some kind of a crash. The other thing is, is I keep seeing this ace of cups, like he's given an offer to just leave and go to a psych hospital or something. His opposition, look at that, the queen of swords. But the, wow. look at the final outcome, he refuses to accept it. This tower is coming over him. Yeah. And this is well, like, he's, refusing to see. he's in denial, man. Oh, I'm sure he is, yeah. Go ahead, what were you gonna say, please? No, I, ju I just said he's his own worst enemy. He brings about his own self-destruction. I'm mm -hmm. not surprised that you got the card, the tower. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, yeah, the jury very much in purpose, very much about balance, scale of justice, but shadow. There is a shadow over them. Okay. Okay, so we're talking about Trump uh, threatening the jury. So I just wanted to make sure I better go over here and type it out for people. And the next people, the people wanted to know if, if he was going to get a fair trial in New York. I think that's actually a legitimate uh, thing. What do you, and you, you want to check and see if he's going to get a fair trial? Is he going to get a fair trial? You want me to ask that as a yes or yeah. no question? Is yeah, do you feel like it's unfair? <laughs> It felt fair, like in an Elizabethan way. Sorry about that. We're off to the fair. Um, yes. Uh, do you think it's fair? It's going to be fair. So it's a good question. Trial. Um, well, I want to say this much. The pendulum is going all over the place. And then it started, it settled somewhere between no and maybe. But I'm not getting a yes. It's a, it's, I'm getting, it's now at a maybe but it was gravitating more toward the no. So that could be what we are saying. Maybe it's just impossible for him to get a fair trial. I feel like he's being offered a guilty plea that he doesn't want to take. No, I don't think he would accept that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Um, that seems to be his regular behavior, says yeah. Joyce Pietras. I agree, uh, Joyce. Um, Rose Blue, yeah. judge has ordered that the um, names be anonymous. What do you think about that, Chuck? Hmm. That the names being anonymous of the jurors? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I was reading the comments there. I missed the first part of your question. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, I'm just uh, over here on YouTube making sure everything gets posted. Yeah. I was actually, I was reading the comments here and you asked me a question and you said about the jurors being anonymous. What, what was the first part, please? Well, it goes back to that whole idea of threatening the jurors. Um, yeah. Do you so think you, that, um, please go ahead. Yeah. Well, so you're asking, I'm sorry. So you're, th you're thinking for their safety, their names would be kept anonymous? Yeah, that's basically what they're saying. We have Leslie Kane, the poet, here, yeah. Leslie Kane Paladin. 
uh, writes, uh, have to be anonymous because he would put Target on their backs as soon would. as he had the information. Yeah. Though I wonder, uh, I know he has gag orders against that sort of behavior, but I guess he would, maybe that's just not going to stop him. Mm -hmm. Or he'll find a way around it. All right. The next thing has to do, and this came up a lot the last couple of days, has to do with Trump and Biden in the polls. As many of you said, uh, the polls have been all over the place. Some of the polls show Trump going ahead and some show a huge boost for Biden after he uh, gave his uh, speech. Do you feel like the polls are going to be sliding more Trump or Biden? Because now they say Trump is falling in the polls because of all these legal problems. What do you think? Well, my instinct says that uh, Biden is going to rise in the polls. I hope to God he does. But instinctively, I feel that he is. Uh, Biden is, seems to be swinging uh, with uh, punches where Trump just is going down, down, down in the mire. And I, I have to believe he's going to eventually come out ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the question that I wanted to get, make sure to get to, because this was, I asked quite a bit and I put this, there were like 10 people that asked the same question. So I, I put all your questions together and that, and I sent you some information as well on this, Chuck. Yeah. The, ma the main question people want to talk about regarding the election has to do with the RFK effect because of what happened with the uh, Bernie Sanders people, you know, with the division that happened uh, with the, the DNC having that kind of blowout. Now it's come out, I think we had some film footage on it, I don't know if you want to see it, but of people working on RFK's campaign saying that the common enemy is Biden, as if to say that they would be willing to even coordinate with Trump to help Biden lose. How do you feel about that? Well, it certainly seems that the, the Biden people are doing their best to annihilate Kennedy, get him out of the picture as quickly as they can, because I think definitely he would siphon far more votes from him than Trump, that seems to be traditional. But uh, don't you feel that uh, that he's going to, RFK is going to eventually just fade away on his own? He's not like Ross Perot, if you remember him about 30 years ago. Remember but when, that, when yeah. the, uh, the first George Bush were running and Ross Perot was an actual serious threat. Uh, but I don't think he has that kind of power strength. I think he's going to disappear. Don't you think he could have that kind of power if he only focused his campaign on swing states where there was a difference of only a couple of points between the two candidates? For example, if he focused his money on Michigan, Pennsylvania, you know, Florida? I think, yes, if it's that close, he definitely could siphon off enough votes from Biden, swing it toward Trump. I think that could happen. That's a good point you make. I think so, that's why he wants him out of the picture as quickly as possible. Okay, so this, there were a lot of questions regarding the FK, FK. We'll try and get to all of them. So the first one is, let's just start with the basics. Do we feel that RFK uh, could siphon uh, votes off of Biden in, how do we word this? Let's just ask if he's a legitimate threat uh, to Biden that's being elected. Is that the best way to ask it? That's a good yes or no question. Hmm? Yeah, I'm confused. Yes. Uh, is he a threat to Biden being reelected? Yes or no? I'm getting a very strong no. Very strong no. Okay. So let's see about the future. Of, and then the future of the RFK uh, junior um, election in general or his campaign in general. See if we can throw some cards on it. Because that's what makes me nervous is him being so in the pocket of Trump that he isn't focused on winning, he's focused on just disrupting in states like Pennsylvania and Ohio, because if we lose Pennsylvania, Ohio, yeah. Michigan, Indiana, because you know, he's striking points off, that's the problem. This is reminding me of Ralph Nader back in 2000. Yeah. You know, it's so close between um, George Bush and um, 
and uh oh my god why am i blanking on his name <laughs> this is a senior moment oh is it um he won the popular vote and um uh go al gore bah. yeah uh, uh some felt that ralph nader si siphoned off enough votes to throw it throw it close enough to bush well everything that could go wrong went wrong the the you know, they couldn't tell if it was a chat or what. It was organized badly with a butterfly thing. People accidentally voted for the wrong person, Buchanan. So that was 600 votes. Um, but this happened so much that if you did, if you were really trying to make sure, if you knew you couldn't win, but you were trying to give it to Trump, what you would do is you would just go to those states where one or two points divide the two candidates. And if they couldn't stomach voting for Trump and they can't stomach voting for Biden, you take those vo votes, you give it to Trump. Mm -hmm. So that is, so who would they be attracting? Disenfranchised people, people who for whatever reason are disgruntled and unhappy with the Democratic Party. Yeah, or unhappy with both parties actually. Or independents who voted for Biden the last time, and for whatever reason, they don't, um, they don't feel, they don't feel that it's working for them. No. Um, any other questions that we had about RFK? Um, we're getting that um, he's getting that it's not that big of a threat. I'm. Yeah, so I got a strong no on that one, as far as him being a threat to Biden. You know, it's interesting. Uh, RFK's own family does not even want him to be running. Really? Yeah, that's what I read that today on the internet, one of the news services. Alter Road re readers have a hanging Chad card. Oh, really? Yeah. That's funny. Uh, uh, same as Paul Gosser. If the family says you are a horrible person, you should believe them. That's funny. Yeah. Now, that's an interesting question from Jill. Is RFK getting foreign money to run? Yeah, okay, let's ask. I'm yeah. gonna ask inevitable. Very good question. Okay. I'm getting not a definite yes, but a maybe to a yes on that. Like there's a good likelihood. What are you getting? I'm getting that he's writing people who are contacts, that he has many, many contacts, and he's writing and, and connecting with them directly to get money. This is mastery working directly. So this is a really smaller campaign than you would think. Mm -hmm. However, I believe there is some kind of an investigation going on, and there is the CIA has files on this guy. This guy's mm -hmm. gone to jail. He's He was in jail in Cuba, too, briefly. He was going to speak at University of Washington, and he came two days late to speak because he was in a Cuban jail. So the guy was always getting into trouble. Uh, but yeah. he, his opposition has the sword of truth, and it will be used against him. Remember, the eighth house, if you do four-card split, it's uh, the first card is, is the person. The second card is your enemy, your hope and your fear, and, and what will likely happen. So the enemy has the sword of truth. That's not good. So that means there's power in the hands of people that would use it against him. His hope and his fear is the offers he's being given. Something is changing very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, yeah. Do you feel that means there could be some foreign investors used getting money? Uh, he's going to be exposed because of his drug, his history of drug and alcohol abuse. And that's ultimately what could cost him his election. There's something here about his maintaining of sobriety. He's, he had a former heroin addiction, I think, right? His sobriety uh -huh. temperance is, is called into question. Here's the FBI. I told you it was an FBI investigation. King of Pentacles, the hidden G-man, the hidden man of investigations, along with the sword of truth. Look at this, defending himself. Ace of Cups, defending himself against an Ace of Cups offers means that he took a bribe or was compromised and is under federal investigation. Yeah. Look at this. He's in his cups. I wonder if that even means Biden just might facilitate this. I think Biden definitely wants him out of the picture as quickly as possible. 
Well, no, I don't think Biden would be allowed to interfere with an FBI investigation. Well, I just mean to facilitate it, maybe expedite it a little. You don't think he could do that? Um, as no, you can't do that. That would be morally and ethically wrong. It's not okay. his Justice Department. If the Justice Department has a criminal investigation into this guy being compromised and potentially a drug or alcohol problem is coming up. See, this is the FBI. If you're looking at a mysterious king or the king that lives in the world of mystery, it's the king of pentacles, and he's always hunting around with money. So who's that? The FBI follow the money first. So if you're looking for a card, that's the G-man, the hidden man who's looking for the money. The best one is always the king of pentacles because he's the hidden. He's the he's. He's the guy that's looking for the information. If you're looking for a spy card, somebody who's spying on you, it's traditionally the Page of Swords. Page of Swords. Because it's the person who's trying to get at the truth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the guy is obviously under investigation. Mm. And, he, and what did he take? And the fact that there's a seven of wands, he's trying to defend himself. This boy is in trouble. In trouble. Yeah. It goes back to what Fiona Hill said about being compromised and the fact that, you know, Donald Trump needed a lot of money. He needed to bail himself out. And the Russians are really nice to you when they're trying to compromise you. They'll give you whatever they want. They'll give you prostitutes, whatever. I mean, they're wonderful entertainers because they are trying to buy you. Just like when a pharmaceutical country company takes you off to Hawaii and wines and dines you because they want you to sell oxycodone or something like mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. That's also a form of being compromised. So, yeah. or are they, they're going to take you to Mars. Now it just came out that Putin angrily announces that he's canceling one of his space programs. So, What's the message there? He's broke and he can't. Well, we don't have any money. And so we're going to have to start cutting back on our cosmonaut program. Well, who's that mm -hmm. to? You see what you made us do? You're not going to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> not even the moon. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, Elon Musk. We have to help us. You say to get to Mars. But yeah, we're cutting back on our cosmonaut program. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we'll take our vacation next year you know? that's right that's right okay so we yeah. talked about jonathan odie and diddy i don't know if anyone else has any questions about jonathan odie and diddy mm -hmm. um that came Quite up we did get through we got through trump's stock market crash we got through rfk and all the rfk question odie is like a i don't know what is he like a weird i've I don't Watch know. Is there anything more we can say about that in terms of it's just more creepy news? That's kind of how yeah, you have that to was it. what I got from that. When you sent me that video, I just said, This is creepy. I the the energy was just like ugh. You know, and and to think I have met Diddy. I stood two feet from him once. Oh like, really? Oh yeah, it was uh, when where we used to work, Earth Bar. I told I told that story, I think, two a couple of weeks ago on here. He, he was he used to come in the store sometimes and there was a customer who wanted to take a selfie with him and he refused remember that story i told and oh that's right and i got his handed to diddy he was at least polite about it he said look i you have to understand i just got back from the gym i'm sweaty i don't look good i let you take a picture i don't know what's going to happen with that picture it could end up on the internet so please understand, I can't let you take a selfie with me. So he at least explained it. That was my main memory of him. And um, but now I'm like, yuck! I actually was in the, you know, in the energy field of this man. You know, is that you beeping or me beeping? Oh uh, yeah, sorry about that. I tell people not to text me or call me during the show, and they do it anyway. So sorry. What are you doing right now? What are you doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> What am I doing? Silence them. Oh, <laughs> uh, let me see. Uh, we have a question here. I have to ask about Princess Kate because the eclipse squared both her sun and moon. I just want to check. This is where we need Joyce, the astrologer here. But Whimsy, do you have any thoughts about that? I have to ask about Princess Kate because Princess Catherine, oh, eclipsed. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, um, 
I think she can recover. I mean, like I put, try to put myself in people's shoes. I think what I, I wouldn't want the kids to be seen in public right now. Like feel like, why can't we see the kids? I mean, you have to put yourself in Harry and uh, yeah. William's cup of shoes. They remember everybody staring at them when their mom, look at their face, ah, your mother's dead. You know, I mean, if they come out and go to church and everybody knows your mom is sick and everyone's staring at them, I mean, that's a lot to lay on a little kid. So um, I think it's not a bad idea to keep the kids shielded from all of this. I think so, too. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead. We'll throw some cards and uh, see how Catherine is doing of Wales. Hope she's doing well. Let's take a look. That was you. <laughs> uh, no, it's not me. No, it wasn't me either. I don't know where that came from. Every um, time an angel... an angel gets its wings. Yeah. Oh, somebody just sent me a kiss. That's cool. A friend of mine. Is that what the ding was? Yeah, they just sent me a little. <laughs> All right. Uh, Go ahead, sweetie. You first. Well, I got, uh, you know, there's, there's shadow, uh, compromise, you know, the shadow, everything that's going on right now, compromise, trying to maneuver around all of this to find the best solution, such as what you just said about the keeping the children under wraps, deciding how they're going to maneuver this publicly. But I also got bravado, meaning I, I take bravado to mean Kate's inner strength. Her personality, mm -hmm. I think she's got a lot of bravado in her that's going to help her to prevail through all of this. But in the meantime, there is the shadow and, of course, a lot of compromise going on right now. Those were the cards that jumped out of the deck when I was shuffling. Mm -hmm. Now, what did you get? Confusion. Uh, there's some confusion here. Um, the other, her husband, death. You know, to be honest with you, like divorce. I got to be honest, I feel like William uh, is going through a midlife crisis. He's 42 now, is that correct? I think he was 42. What year was he? I think he was born 1982, was it? 82, 83. Yeah, 82. He was 82, yeah, so he would be 42 now. Yeah, so he wants Harry's life. He wants to be free. He wants to be in La La Land. He wants to have his own life. So I feel as Catherine, like he just took off. He just checked. I don't want to do this anymore. I, it's fake. It's not real. I can't put on this fake anymore. We broke up two and a half years ago. I, you know, it's like, uh, like the wedding of the did you see when they went to the wedding of her friend in jordan or wherever it was or united arab Emirates? somewhere they went to a wedding and yeah. he yeah. told her to get her hands off him that is uh, so much like his father like this is like get your hands off me and, was, and uh move it along like that i remember that there was an incident prince charles and diana there was one time where he snapped at her or something because she touched him or Oh, I remember there was a time she sat on the hood of his car and he just had a blitz fit about that. Get off that. What are you doing? What are you doing? He just went off on her in front of everybody and the press got it and reporters, you know, so that's, uh, that almost reminds me of that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, just real confusion and, you know, he, death. This guy literally checked out of his marriage, doesn't want to do it anymore, and wants to go back to his carefree college days back at the pub with his conservative friends talking about, you know, Tory values and stuff. I mean, this is not the guy she thought she knew 
who was more Diana's kid. So he became increasingly conservative. That's what happened with William. And she became more and more of an artist. She was always a bit of the artist free type, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're in a power struggle. Magician is a, a card of power. She's a, she, This woman is, you know, I think that people have underestimated how smart this woman is. She went to very good school. She's not, yeah. this is a smart woman. That's what I get with the bravado card. Like she's got a lot going on in her. And that's ultimately how she's going to survive all of this and prevail. Yeah, this guy doesn't respect her. I don't think he respects her, an amateur photographer. No, she wants to be the master. Look at this. Queen of Swords is also the, the, the woman who puts the past behind her. The season's queen, and we've got her opposition being death, which could be a divorce. I'm telling you, this guy does not, he doesn't want to be the prince. He doesn't want, No. he doesn't want the throne. Look at this. He wants to run away. Look at this. Well, I think no more than his father wants it. I, I think Charles would love to take the crown off and just flee. I don't think he wanted it either. They both have been thrust into this. Harry even said that, remember the Oprah Winfrey interview he gave he said i'm free but my brother and my father are trapped they're trapped they can't get out of this yeah and it you know it's interesting when i profile and i've been asked to profile william why was william so threatened by megan and people have to understand it from william's perspective he lost his childhood to these traditions he yeah. had to spend his Sundays with the archbishop reciting Latin. He yeah. lost it all because they told him that there was nothing more important than he give his life to hold up these traditions. So he doesn't yeah. appreciate some lady who comes in from La La Land, California, coming and telling him that all of that means nothing when my entire life has been taken from me. I had to give up my whole childhood to this. So yeah. there's that aspect. Well, you know, if I may say, when you were talking about his midlife crisis, I thought this is someone who didn't even get to be a young man. He didn't get to have a young adulthood. You know, do those things we do in our 20s, sow our wild oats, so to speak. You know, he didn't get to do any of that. So it would make sense that that would make a midlife crisis all the more intense and more explosive right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing I felt as William was that. Harry hogged my mother. She got him all to, you know, he got Diana all to himself. And I had to go and spend my childhood with the archbishop. I had to give my life to the, to, you know, I'm not free. I'm trapped by this. I'm trapped. I'm trapped. And you get to go and you get to be with mom and you, mommy, and you get to get all this attention. And someday I'm going to be able to be with mommy. Well, that someday isn't going to happen because now she's dead. So the, the time that I could have had, my mother, you took from me. Yeah. You took that time and you hoarded it all for yourself while I was out doing the family business. I had yeah. no choice. I was born into this. And so while I'm off doing the family business, you're off uh, eating popcorn with mommy watching movies. And now mm -hmm. she's dead. So in a sense, it's almost like irrationally as a child, he blames Harry. You took, you took all of her time and now she's dead. Mm-hmm. And I can certainly see the the resentment toward Megan. He probably saw Megan as the one who corrupted Harry, so to speak, to you know convince Harry to get out of that life. Hey, come, hey, come to California with me. Let's start a new life. You don't have to be living like this anymore. Uh, maybe that could have been a lot of the resentment. So I guess the next question people want to know is: Will William abdicate? What do you think? Will he just leave and say, I don't want it? I've never thought of that before. Will he quit? Hmm. That's a good question. Okay. You know, I, I'm getting a strong no, and I was even feeling that before I even picked up the pendulum. You know, I'd never even thought of that even as an option for him. I don't think he even sees it as an option. 
Okay, I want to get through this royal stuff really quick because we had two or three other questions that I got texted and I, I do see what the person said. One of those was a text question and I just, I did see your question to the person. Okay. Um, so we have questions after this, but um, what, what, what is this one? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, will he abdicate? Here he is. The star falls on his enemy. His hopes and fears, frugality, his final outcome, marriage. He wants to marry some woman or be with some woman. Maybe it's his wife. I hope it's his wife. Uh, there's an angry man right on top of him. Uh, there's also a possible legal. I think he's going to try and save his marriage. I don't know if he can, he can but maybe he could. Yeah. He's got the king of swords right on top of him. Yeah. And uh, two of swords. Uh, over the person's star. That means that he and Harry both don't want it. Look at this. He's got the courts. That could be divorce courts and four of pentacles. This could be a financial upset. Look at this. Two of cups and three of pentacles, building a home with somebody in marriage. Either he's going to try and save his marriage and come out of this weird midlife crisis, or he's going to be with another woman. I don't know which it is. I hope it's, I hope it's Kate. Um, but those cards are all about building a house and being with some woman or something. Who is it? But were they giving you any clue about him abdicating the throne? Now, I was getting a big no on that, but I was wondering if what you're well, reading. Because I think it would be a really good idea. <laughs> yeah, but I just don't know to do it. <laughs> That's the thing. I think he just feels that he's so duty bound. He's, he's, very, he's a very dividing He's a very dividing personality. He, yeah. it, you know, if you're going to be a king, you need to unite the House of Windsor. And all he has done is divide the House of Windsor. And that has made the House of Wind Windsor weaker because two members of the House of Windsor walked out the door. And so his way of doing things has not strengthened the House of Windsor. If you want to be a good king, yes, you have to have rules. But you do, first and foremost, you try to, unite your kingdom and this kingdom is in shambles so clearly they can't see the forest through the trees this type of conflict that he has with his brother is actually what takes kingdoms out it's what ultimate you know that was at the heart of the ottoman empire you know people killing each other's kids and and warfare too many wives too many kids too much competition i even wonder if the monarchy itself is going to disintegrate like it will even be there by the time it's ready for William. Let's take a look and, and then we'll do. Will the monarchy survive? Cool. Hmm. This is interesting. I tell you, I got uh, exhaustion and truth, meaning just too much is coming to the surface. I think everybody is tired, exhausted. It's like the monarchy is exhausted. Like enough is enough, and ultimately, truth. Truth is going to bring it down. What, what did you get? I think you did great. I mean, that's exactly, you know, it, it survives as an academic discussion. So when George grows up, you know, everyone's going to know that George is Prince, but it's, it's outdated. It's an outdated thing. And so it's respect and kindness to him without all of the power. You know, it's interesting, William, uh, his future is he's an, he's an academic. He's an academic of the church. He would do very well as an archbishop. He's a scholar. He presents as a scholar, George. Uh -huh. uh, two of swords. He's, uh, you know, he has no desire to expand the monarchy. Uh, but this is, uh, you know, um, the, 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 the kingdom, the kingdom, the emperor, the kingdom, is an intellectual thing. 
So it's like showing up and saying, this person is descended from so-and-so and technically the king. And so it's kind of cool to see the history of the House of Windsor. But mm -hmm. they are no longer going to be financially funded. You know, it's really down with the crown. You can see here again, evidence of academia. You see, this is an academic. These are academic cards. Yeah. Uh, will it survive? Look at this. So sobriety and frugality. So hmm. it's a very controlled, small way it exists. Yeah. But the smaller the better, because my God, what aristocrats have done in Europe, I mean, yeah. It's just terrible. It and was. what's going on with Diddy is just what's happening with Diddy Combs is just another example of what we see with aristocracy. No people that go crazy when they realize that they're drunk with power. Yeah. And okay. usually that's when people tremble. Mm -hmm. All right. Before we close, people have been watching the situation in the um, in the GOP led house, and people are kind of curious about what's going on. First off, as you know, the House only is ahead the GOP by what is it, one or two votes at this point. The other thing is is that Johnson, the head of the GOP, it looks like a lot of people in the GOP are not happy with them. And finally, uh, people are worried that Ukraine is not getting the support that they need. We're going a little bit over, but we, uh, we'll try and get to as much as we can of your GOP House questions. First off, will the House fall? Will, will the GOP House fall in the next uh, couple of months before the next elections? That's the first question. Before the election. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Before the election, okay. Yeah. Before the election. I keep getting a no on that. As far as when I phrase it before the election. Uh-huh. Mastery. So maybe they can hold it together, but you know what? There are people running. Look at that. People that are not even going to run in 2024. And look yeah. at this here again, running. Quick movement. Okay, the next question people wanted to know is, will Mike Johnson be ousted by Marjorie Taylor Greene? A lot of questions today. That comes, that comes up no. You, you got no, I got yes. You got yes, tell me, tell me. Uh, waiting for her ship to come in. No. Um, she thinks that they are going uh, against her. They're having secret meetings and stuff. Working. Mm -hmm. with her. Look at this. Stabbed in the back by his own tennis. Wow. So, wow. Um, Johnson would likely pass the bills. Um, yeah. I think that they're going to get a deal because. I think they're going to get a deal, and I think that as a result of getting that deal, they're going to oust Johnson. Mm -hmm. oh. Because look at this. Well, when you start I the question, but I, I kind of know. That he's and not going to be him? That's what I got. I, it was pretty strong, but you're getting a, a, a definite yes there, so I don't know what that could be. Usually, well, uh, let's just wait. Uh, you know, it's okay. We don't, I, I think it's great when we don't agree. Um, I just see him coming into a three of sorts heartbreak, a judgment. There's a judgment coming against him. His hopes and fears, time running out, wheel of fortune. And then there's something building. Look, he's having to defend himself about being stabbed in the back. Could be that he survives it. Um, but... Honestly, I think that what's going to happen based on this in answer to the last question is that they are going to pass the aid bill. But as a result of passing the aid bill, that may be exactly why Marjorie Taylor Greene is so uh, bent on getting rid of him. Mm. You know, it's going to probably happen after that bill gets passed. That's really going to be because I see her getting weaker and weaker and weaker. I hope so. No one listens to her. And I see them. Well, you think she's the an idiot well you see, i do we have time for one more is the uh democrats going to take the house in november i think we are yeah maybe i'm just optimistic let's take a look one more quick one we got to go though okay 
Okay, and where's the question again, please? Uh, I had like somebody ask it, a ton of questions about the GOP. Will we take the House in November, Democrats? Will the House? Excuse me. Will the Democrats take the House in November? Will the Democrats take the House in November? I got a yes. Me too. I got a yes. Yay. I, I mean, that makes me personally happy. This was a strong yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that I see a couple more re Republicans, two or three, actually could leave before the end. Because look at this coming in, this energy of the five of swords, wild energy. Also, more prosecutions. I keep seeing prosecutions over members of Congress. If Gosar gets prosecuted, if others get pro prosecuted, you know, I just don't know what's going on with the Justice Department. But I would not want to be GOP with these houses. Just it just doesn't look good for the GOP. Not, not those guys. Oh my god! Did you have fun? <laughs> <laughs> we got like we, I, we. There were more questions, but you guys, we ran yeah. out of time. Thank you for questions. being patient with us. Yeah, there's only so many we could get to. <laughs> so many. All right. Thank you, everyone who's joining us. If you can like, share, subscribe, or think about becoming a member, that's really great. We get together on Saturdays for our private salon, private readings. And on Wednesdays, we teach a heart centered remote viewing if you become a mem member at the healers and empaths level. Anything going on with you, Chuck, that people need to know oh, about? Just my own channel, Chuck's Captivating Chronicles. Where I talk about old Hollywood history, Hollywood industry news. Uh, I love Lucy stories, Lucille Ball. Just please like and subscribe. And I do a live stream on Mondays, Chuck's Captivating Chat. Sounds fantastic. All right. Until next time, everybody, be kind to all so that all will be kind to you, too. Uh, love and light. Uh, God bless. Much love. And uh, peace out. Bye. Bye.